America Late Night. We're here with James Spader. Uh, one of my favorite things when you're here is to talk about uh, jobs you had before you entered show business. <laughs> I did not know that you worked at a record store. I did. <laughs> Where was your record store that you worked at? Up on the Upper East Side. Uh, Third Avenue. Gotcha. And was this maybe over the time you worked there, you realized maybe not the most legitimate business? No, no, no. No, it was a lit. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was legit. <laughs> it was, it wasn't like it was ill gotten gains. Okay. But I mean, you know, where it went was, I mean, it was, no, I, it was a little teeny independent record store, and this husband and wife owned it, and they spent every dime that they made on cocaine and quaaludes. <laughs> And they just went back and forth. You can imagine what their household was like. <laughs> they were either like pacing or asleep. It was cocaine and quaaludes, every bit of it. So there was no stock. It was, like, it was the only retail job I ever worked in. And it was just calcifying. I mean, you'd be, it was a time, it, was a, it wouldn't even have taken much to fill the shop, you know, because it was so tiny. And yet they, you know, like, I, I think when I was working there, uh, uh, some girls. Uh, yeah, Rolling the, the Stones, Rolling Stones album. Album came out. I think we, oh yeah, like, I don't know, four copies of it or something. I mean, it was just so <laughs> pathetic. So people would come in, they'd ask for a record. I just, I'd be, you know, I'd do my due diligence. I'd walk them over to the, <laughs> to the band. To the band, I guess, I oh, know, we don't, <laughs> we don't have it. And we'd have like, maybe the, by another record by the same, do you want this one by the same artist? It would be their least interesting <laughs> record. And it was just so, so you'd just be standing there and customers wouldn't come after a while. And there was a guy, and only that, but also there was a guy uh, behind the cash register up at the front. I wasn't allowed to be near the cash registers. So I they was, had two staff members? There were two staff members. Yeah. There was a guy up there and who barely talked to me. And uh, I don't know what he was doing up there. And he was raised up. It was like at the pharmacy to steal Jerry Seinfeld's great joke, yeah. but why do the pharmacists have to be higher than us? <laughs> but anyway, he was like higher. I was down on the floor. He was higher behind the cash registers <laughs> and busy all the time doing, I don't know, God knows what. It was before computers and laptops and phones and everything else. I don't know what the <laughs> he was doing, but he was there so busy all the time and so busy that he couldn't talk with the only other person in the store. <laughs> and, and I would stand there just waiting you know, for, and he'd play music and stuff. He got to choose the music as well. And so, and I would stand there waiting for customers and everything else. Or they would send me out to buy Quaaludes because <laughs> they, you know, they had lots of scripts. I don't know where they're getting these scripts from, but they had tons of scripts, you know. Oh, so interesting. So I, they would send, this was, Quaaludes were uh, prescription drugs. Yes. Okay, gotcha. So they had scripts. But they never sent you out for the cocaine. This was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, that? yeah. They didn't even make quaaludes anymore. You can't? But yeah. anyway. Yeah, I have tried. <laughs> I, did, I did too. I went on a vacation years ago. I went on a vacation down to Cabo San Lucas in Mexico. Mexico, a country I adore. Cabo San Lucas, not so much. I mean, it's sort of a... <laughs> I mean, it's a, basically, at that time, it's, it was sort of resorts and stuff. I am not a resort person. We have one photograph from the trip. It's just this dark black spot on a bright white beach. The black spot is me under an umbrella. <laughs> and anyway, I was so bored and miserable that I killed two whole days out of, I don't know, a five day trip, two whole days in town trying to go to pharmacies because <laughs> I've been told that they sold quaaludes <laughs> in, in pharmacies in Mexico. It's a bunch of bull they, I Were they, and, uh, now, here's a question. I, I, in Mexico, are the pharmacists higher? <laughs> no, if they were, they were on break. I, every time, every pharmacy I'd walk into, they'd, oh, they're the pharmacists isn't here. <laughs> right, they're anyway. like, we have some girls. Anyway, <laughs> anyway these, this couple would send me out because, you know, they had all these scripts, but they couldn't keep showing up at places with different names. So they were constantly looking for someone else who could be the name. You know, you could be Bob. You and know, whatever. Soon, like the minute you sold an album and like it was cash in hand, would they like then take the cash no, and send that you that night? No, yeah. they'd show up at different times during the course of the day, of course, yeah. keep things going. You know, uh, and so they'd show up during the course of the day. You know, maybe twice a day. Come up. They'd only deal with him, the guy up there, right. because he had the cash, and they would just empty the drawer. Wow. Yeah. 
They give you a and reference? That did not last long. It was so, <laughs> oh my God, it was brutal. <laughs> really brutal. Well, as always. Where the hell were we headed with this? <laughs> where we're always headed to the end of the segment. You guys? <laughs> The ninth season premiere of The Blacklist airs next Thursday, October 21st at 8 p.m. right here on NBC. We'll be right back with more Late Night. <laughs>